Hey YouTube, welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video, Mr. Terry, as I continue my search for historical knowledge found here on the internet. All right, welcome back to another video that I'm making in, it's basically a makeshift studio here. I know last video, it the quality was terrible, the mic was bad and all that, and I'm sorry, it's still not going to be as good a quality as I've had before, even if you liked that or didn't like that before, but uh, doing some remodeling and then eventually going to be moving and... So a lot of stuff is being packed and moved around. So it's a little bit up in the air. All right, I'm excited for this video uh, for a couple reasons. First off, we're returning to IBX Toy Cat, who's done these videos that have had uh, like explain some like things in history or geography through Minecraft, which has kind of been funny. And also, they've been really popular. These videos or react videos I've done from this have been really popular, and a lot of you guys seem to be into them. But I love the um, idea of this one, at least just from the title. It's World War One explained in Minecraft for some reason. He he typed there. Um, so I thought we would check this out. Also wanted to use this as an opportunity to promote the Minecraft server uh, that we have in our community. So to get more information about that, uh, join our Discord server. Go to our Discord server. The link will be down below. Join that and you will see a Minecraft channel with uh, basically kind of the rules and how to get involved and those kind of things. Now it's a history themed server, so we encourage people to make cool things with uh, that are history related. And I know some stuff has already been up there, and hopefully, in not too long from now, I'm gonna do I guess kind of reacts to the Minecraft server, where I'm gonna go in basically blind and see some of the stuff that people are working on. So if you are a Minecraft player, new or old, and think that might be something fun and you want more information, join our Discord server. The link will be down below. Go to the Minecraft channel and you'll find all the information that you need over there. All right, let's go ahead and get started though. The original video um, is down below, so make sure you click the link down there so you can support the original channel. And let's go ahead and get started. Hello, I'm a PX Toy Cat, and did you know that the Great War is actually only called World War One retroactively? Yep. The people at the time weren't. So I always made a bad joke to people that was like, you know, do, do you know, <laughs> do you think they called it World War One when it started? And obviously they're like, no, because <laughs> I guess the bad joke would be like, man, if you call World War One, then man, are you predicting another one already? Because people thought this would be the war to end all wars, right? Bad joke, I know so cynical that they assumed there'd be another global catastrophe of the same conflict within about 20 years, although they would have been right if they did assume that. But the interesting thing about World War II is it has such a clear antagonist, such a it's clear true. reason to start, and all of these factors are very clear-cut and widely discussed. The reason it's not so widely discussed for World War I is because of lack of a real purpose or meaning for any of it. It was a very pointless war in some ways, and I figured the only thing more pointless than the reason World War I started would be a Minecraft video trying to explain exactly that to you, and vaguely going over the war in a summer more educational mostly sarcastic way okay uh, before he, he goes on more because he speaks fast the reason what he explained about the popularity of world war ii and people talking about world war ii versus world war one he explained exactly what i believe world war ii is first off very easy to study it's very easy like he was saying it's got very clear defined people and here's the enemies and here's the allies and you have these enigmatic characters like Adolf Hitler, Benito Mussolini, um, and then what's going on over in Japan. It's very clear cut. It's got like, these are the causes. Here's what happens. Here's how it ended. And causes, effects, that kind of relationship. World War One is not like that, which personally makes me, I'm more interested, honestly, in studying World War One than I am World War Two. You know, yeah, it doesn't have as many casualties, but are we really going to use that as a barometer of what I'm um, going to be out there? Because it still was the, the highest casualty war ever, you know, in history. But I think it's more interesting that the causes are very not well defined um, and it didn't solve much. It, it had it was just it's, it's a very it's, it's interesting because it's like a war that didn't start for good reasons and didn't solve anything. So me personally, I actually, that's why I like studying World War One. And again, why, like he says, most people tend to study World War Two more than World War One, at least in, I think, mainstream uh, culture. And you better believe that's what we have. But I want to change video, that. Because I would argue that Turf Wars and Minecraft actually gets it better in terms of the World War One experience than any other, uh, you know, mini game or game mode in any other game. So with that said, let's dive into So is this a game? They made a game? Warfare during World War One. It's going to be a lot of fun. Or really stupid. Or both. Because we're fighting against a lot of white people. Which, I mean, actually, is what World War One was. People call it a world war, but realistically it was a European war yeah. that happened to involve a lot of possessions around the world. Sure. It didn't involve every single country in the world. Of course. Uh, that would be kind of inaccurate. It yeah, I mean, yeah, it's 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 like, it's kind of like Europe fighting it's uh, each other, 
but just fighting all over the world, right? Their colonies this is the age of imperialism or kind of, the, it's actually the beginning of the end of that age of imperialism. So they have colonies all over the planet and they're using the resources from their colonies. Yes, non-European people fought, but you see kind of the, the puppet tier kind of is, is the Europeans that are getting all these other parts of the world involved. It's just at this point, Europe's influence was entirely around the world. See, as right. you can see, it's not just that we're a bunch of white people. We're also fight fighting a bunch of white people. It's a cool oh, wow. building. What a, what a great analogy I've accidentally created. Or oh, he messed up. Did he mess up? Basically. So the reason trench warfare needed to exist in the way that you can see right here. Okay, boom. <laughs> is because of the fact that defensive technology uh, progressed much faster than offensive technology. For sure. For the first time I would say well, since really like medieval times of castle warfare. It was much... Okay. Yeah. Def I mean, defensive technology. Trenches or have been, have been used forever. I mean, trench warfare had been, it's not new to World War I, it had been around forever, and it was useful, okay? Um, I would actually say that the offensive weapons are really what changed, that made the biggest effect on World War I, not, not defensive weapons, uh, because of the range and uh, better range that these guns had, and also the biggest thing with machine guns, which was kind of one of the new newer weapons introduced in the war, made charges basically impossible just what you used to do you used to bury uh, yourself in trenches pretty much in the, the old days you want to call it uh, because even with guns you still had to be very close to the person because they were inaccurate and but they were slow to reload and that kind of thing but machine guns so an offensive weapon i would say i mean i guess it's it's a defensive weapon too i yeah i mean i guess you can see it both ways but anyway um that made charges basically impossible which is why Trenches came even more entrenched and more used because you couldn't leave. You couldn't rush the enemy. So, But I would say offensive weapons um, were kind of a bigger deal there because you also had gas, you had tanks um, that came in. Although some of those things like tanks wasn't as big of a deal. Much easier to defend with a you know, gun in a trench than it was to try and attack a trench with a gun. And yeah, this is something that has kind of changed in modern warfare, but it was definitely true at the time. <laughs> He's literally just you can't hit him. Punching, but it's still hard to hit him. Stormtrooper um, yeah, uh, firing. A hey, two hits right there in a row. Um, but yeah, the, the the idea of trench warfare is pretty simple. It's just that it is much, much easier to defend than it is to attack. When you're behind a trench and someone else isn't, it's very easy to kill them. When they're behind a trench and you're not, it's easy for them to kill you. But the trenches are in fixed geographic positions. They're very easy to make in fixed geographic positions. You literally just need to use a shovel. And this means that it's much easier for you to defend your position, like I'm doing right now, than it is to go out and attack. And that's... Yeah, the... Yeah, the um effectiveness of trenches was such that and i think this goes into why a lot of people study world war one or sorry world war two more than world war one is especially in the western half of the war in the western front um, the war was virtually a stalemate for four years not a lot of movement happening so there's kind of less to study you know in world war two you have so many of these offensive invasions and movement and stuff like that that it's there's more to study i guess in a way but that's also why I think World War One changed the way people viewed wars, because wars were never fought the same. It seemed like uh, um, it was a, a, a different war than than else, like like than before, because again the lack of movement that happened there, and there was no glory in sitting in a trench for months and months and months, years potentially, just waiting to die, which is essentially what people were doing in World War One. Why when they leave theirs, as you can see, they've done quite a few times, then it does the same thing. Another key uh, aspect of, uh, you know, like uh, uh, the World War One that uh, is really well represented via this is the fact that you can spawn... They keep disappearing. To, and this is something that, you know, isn't actually the most practical... Did that happen in World War One? Troops just disappeared. disappeared. And this is something that we saw for the first time in World War One with, uh, you know, flamethrowers, uh, you know, being used for pretty much the first time in widespread warfare flamethrowers are something that aren't hugely practical in war but no. they hugely demoralize the enemy they make sure. the enemy uh, extra scared of it they make the enemy more scared to do normal activities because no one wants to be lit on fire to die you know if you're gonna die yeah we're uh flamethrowers you're gonna see those I mean, they've never i don't know if they've ever been like he said like massively effective but they have utility to them like, for example, when the Americans um, and uh, I guess the Allies in general were pushing back Japan um, out of islands, those islands were thickly forested, thickly jungled, and there's traps and all kinds of um, places to hide and stuff like that. So flamethrowers were useful in those places that were overgrown because you'd blast, you know, all the uh, you blast the trees and the bushes with the fire that would help, you know, in there or 
you know, um, and I guess it wouldn't matter in this geography, in that, in a, in a specific geography is, you know, you find some hole that's used to hide soldiers or something and you just blast in it there. So it's not really like a weapon per se. It's a way to kind of clear areas. But like you said, it's, yeah, it's kind of a demoralizing thing. Like, do you know what? One of my least favorite ways to die would probably be, uh, also there is an invisible person over here, I'm pretty certain. But yeah, if you were, if you had to die, uh, I would not choose death by flame. So they like made so a you game for this. Itch 805, who I killed literally three times in the last uh, couple of minutes, uh, actually left the game. You can make these game modes. That's cool. Because of other reasons, it's funny they have an invisible person on their team, but we're still winning this one pretty handily. It seems like uh, because all of our team, as you can see right here, are, defined, are behind defensive positions. Their team are getting stuck in the spawn, getting demoralized. They're trying to rush us, and it's just not working. They're the ones losing their defensive positions in exchange. They need machine guns like to that. defend. Admittedly, he didn't even leave it. He just got unlucky that I happened to him at the right moment. But still, this is uh, all it really takes for, uh, you know... For this is like to be a fun game mode, just though. To, uh, stay in your just something we can do on our server. People ...as they leave theirs, and you'll start to make a slow lead. Even though it's been five minutes and we've made a pretty decent lead so far, you know, we own about two-thirds of this land right here, you can see how we really have to make this huge, uh, you know, like, push just to make every single block, uh, you know, count. Every single, you know, like, uh, kill we get is just a single block forwards. Someone has to lose mm. their life for every single tiny fraction of a meter. Sometimes lots of people can lose their lives just to trade ground immediately. This actually sounds, that, that sounds really fun there, to, um, to do that there. Now, this looks like, though, like, in their game here, there's a lot more movement than World War One actually has. Had. I mean, it was just like a few dozen miles that ever changed very much over the years of World War One in the Western Front. Eastern Front, of course, is a different story, right? It, they, um, the um, um, Germany and their allies, Austria-Hungary, etc., they are able to push right way further east than they ever did west, um, which led to demoralization of the war for the um, Russian Empire and them eventually, well indirectly leading to the Russian Revolution, which leads to uh, Russia pulling out the war. So, but if you're talking about the Western Front, yeah, this is not what that would have looked like because they're pushing, this blue team here is pushing way further back when really it just would have been a stalemate forever and ever and ever, which would have made a very boring video game, which is probably too why you don't see a lot or nearly as many World War I video games as World War II video games, because if you're gonna try to make it realistic, it actually would not be probably a very fun game for common people just to be sitting at a stalemate looking at each other in a trench. It'd be a pretty niche, I think, community that would actually enjoy that. Sometimes we'll kill one of them, then they'll kill one of us immediately afterwards, and it leads to this kind of back and forth of the line. Oh, now, now the red line's gone over to there. And you can see how this is a near constant fact to the stage where even this has happened. Like, oh yeah, when I started saying that and when I finished saying that, we're at the same so result. So you build time between... Dying. Uh, Round. The idea of stalemate and bloody conflict is something that really drove these wars in quite a way. So like I said, the alliance system that kind of determined the wars was pretty silly and arbitrary and only existed because there were a lot of, uh, you know, treaties that all guaranteed mutual, uh, you know, kind of uh, defense. You know, when you look at that specifically, so you're looking at the allied powers versus central powers, right? Germany, Austria, Hungary, Ottoman Empire. Those are the big three. Um, the big three of the allies would be uh, you got France. Uh, Russia and Britain and then you know America joins in later but you got those other nations it looks like this is so imbalanced right with that happening there but so it's pretty impressive how the central powers who were initially taking the offensive and did most of the offensive work in this war um, did as well as they did because when you just look at again all these different things then you you look at you, you'd think like wow they're like totally outmatched and all that stuff and uh, yeah, as a result of this, there was a lot of alliance changing, a lot of uh, you know wacky things done to try and change the power of war. Look at and this sniper like tower here, huh? Russia actually left the war halfway through because they had a Soviet revolution. But you know, they left the war. Wouldn't have been the flag then, the first one, and but in yes. In the same way, Itch 805, who I've attacked and killed multiple times. You know, they they went down a lot of times. Uh, actually, left the game as well. So yeah, the the Bolsheviks, as they were called, they basically the Communist Party. Um, one of their kind of rallying cries at first, because there's two revolutions, and I don't want to get into too much detail in 1917, but in the end, what ends up being produced is um, formation of the USSR, and kind of one of the platforms that the party under Lenin and them were, uh, were kind of advocating for was getting out of the war, right? Blaming the former Russian Empire for how they handled the war and getting involved in it and stuff like that, and, because, and also because the war was going so poorly for, um, for Russia, this sounded like a you know, pretty good proposition that this new government group coming into power would 
basically sign a treaty and end the, the, their, their involvement in the war, which is what happened um, not long after they took over of uh, the new governments that took over with the provisional government and then the um, communist government afterwards. But and then a lot of soldiers, actually Russian soldiers, actually left the war front to basically go and join the revolution back home, which essentially doomed them as well. You know, perfect recreation that even uh, Russia has left halfway through. I, I call them Russia because they were so easy to kill. Is that offensive? It's probably not because they have a lot of men in Russia. That's kind of like their one. Uh, that was their one big advantage before they industrialized, which was both of the world wars. So they could just throw a lot of people at something. It didn't matter if they died at two to one. They could still defeat most of the countries that way. Look at World War II. That's exactly what happened. Um, they had basically double the casualties of anybody else. And yeah, there's just meat shields. So I don't know if you want to contribute that to Joseph Stalin or something, but that's one thing. I mean, they're also fighting in their homeland for, you know, with, with Operation Barbarossa, the German invasion of Russia, where the Russians, I mean, they really, if they want to hold on to their land, they have no choice but to put people out there, which, you know, they win the war, but yeah, at a insane cost of loss of life. Because of their huge geographic size and their huge population they kind of never resolved. invade russia just remember it could be worse we could have romania here and they could switch sides in us a few times fun fact they, they switch sides in both world wars at some point <laughs> so did it, the um italy wars is just how italy too if they didn't actually, uh, d- that's a different story it's so like the red teams so coming every back war, uh, every you know once the game goes on for a certain amount of time we've gone for just about 10 minutes now uh, they have to increase the number of lines you get each time so now it's actually four turf lines every time you kill someone which oh, is wow. the only reason that we've been pushed back pretty significantly we thought we were winning pretty early on the red team's winning who's which one's who who's the allies and who's the central powers head start. but again that's the only real way to make good progress in this sort of thing you need to surprise people and that's why germany's tactic during both wars was surprise invasion and you might be like well that's kind of a fun fact their surprise attack and what their tactic was surprise invasion via belgium you know, invading a neutral country and it worked both times you yeah figure, like, that that's the famous thing right that the the invasion of france through belgium was again used by Germany twice so it was in World War One and World War Two, uh, mostly because it's a flatter land, easier to move through, and Belgium wasn't as defended as France might be. So that's why it happens. Now, um, you'd think, all right, then how how could France allow that in the Second World War? Well, I mean, they built the Maginot Line, which really only extended to France again, but Belgium was an ally of theirs, and um, so maybe it looks bad. A lot of reasons for that, though. But again, interesting that happened twice. Been expected. But no, that that was uh, <laughs> definitely not apparently. So yeah, you can kind of see this endless stalemate that started to happen now. Once our initial it's like you know, the blue teams pulling rush, back. Oh up. nope, someone died so on the blue that, team. Like, yep, we're all gonna hide behind Build time. It's like it's winter time. Everyone that, sit exact back. That's led to where we are right now, where now red actually has a lead despite all this stuff that we've been doing. And yeah. Uh, it's. I, I think. I think. This but is who's who? Like, even though this is meant to be just like a fun little goofy, one of the easiest. Uh, it's kind of cool. They got like a stadium there. Years ago. It's like it is the Colosseum, is, uh, but it's surprisingly fun in my opinion because of the fact that it proves that without increasing the amount you get per kill. Amazing what you can do with Minecraft and the all the customization you can do. But um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, we're just vaguely firing at where we think he should be. Yeah, you. Oh, you can see a shadow on the ground over there. Oh, you see that. Wait, hey, what? nailed him. So yeah, that's, there's one invisible person on that team and one non-invisible person. Whoa, one hacker you get, and one non-hacker. You get your ghost, saying. your ghost in the uh, trench. Cue the Sabaton one song. One player, one very competent player. Seems like we've gone Italy on the other team, eh? See, very real, very offensive descriptions of the sides during the World Wars. <laughs> Only found in IBX Toy Cat History X Minecraft videos. Yeah, you can, you can literally see someone either deliberately or, you know, via a Minecraft bug. It's not fair to say. Uh, it's not unfair to say. Just literally placing blocks right. Over I mean, there. I mean, they did invent the invisibility potion, right, in World War One. So yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna duplicate it so that they know I can see them. Oh, maybe I'm not gonna duplicate it. Oh, they've got a little infinite sign. How nice. See, so, yeah, my plan is literally just assume they're behind one of the six walls. turf lines for. A kill. I, we actually did it. <laughs> Minecraft mods, really can you get this in plan. there on our server? You know, just saying, pretty good at this. But yeah, a lot of the tactics to winning any kind of semi-competitive game like this is really demoralizing the enemy, making them feel bad, uh, you know, making them... Uh, well, you can knock the blocks down making bad decisions because, with your arrow? Again, when it is a full-on uh, stalemate on both sides, when it is literally just 
both 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 ends making the same decisions of hiding behind cover. It's going to be pretty neutral in terms of how the trades are made. It's going to be a very slow game. But don't really. Oh, he got him. That is a good shot, can we say? Or oh, a very lucky shot. But you know, I'm going to say good shot. Um, but yeah. Is it always a one-hit kill, or is that just headshots? Very minute decisions. Um, oh Jesus, our team is getting destroyed. Oh God. <laughs> okay. Pushed let's try, back. Let's try to hit the invisible first. Blue team. Easy enough. You're losing. Know where they're at. No, this this is not how. Slowly being pushed this back. This is how it ends. Oh God. The fact the fact it's that like it's 1918. Well the hacker, just saying. Tides are turning. Game. The hope is that Italy over there, you know, this guy in the weird little Hawaiian shirt. The hope is he's so incompetent that it actually cancels out everything else. <laughs> or maybe he does just. He's just there, sitting there. <laughs> I mean, again, basically the same. As Was there soldiers? Are they saying there were soldiers that just walked out in the battlefield and were just like, "Hmm, what's going on here today?" <laughs> you know, funnily enough, being invisible makes it really hard to hit, and Red has won the game. And just like that, oh. the Reds won, kind of like in the real World War One, because famously Germany won the war uh, in such a serious way that uh, you know they they then later decided to be angry that they won the war and started World War Two. That's actually the official history <laughs> of how that one went. So but no, what really happened is Germany felt like they were cheated in the war. They felt like it was not a fair fight. They felt like the the peace terms that were imposed on them were That's not the big fair. One. You know, and as a result of that, as a result of part of their territory being occupied, their military being limited, and the huge debts they had to repay, what actually ended up happening is just 20 years later, as a result of what we like, what we now call World War One. This led to very. I mean, that's one of the big. It's it's interesting thing because, so. Germany was you know vilified for the war and a lot of that because they're the ones who invaded right they're the ones who invaded although again you can go back to the justification of their invasions and stuff like that because you that's the thing about world war one is you sit there and peel back uh the the responses why is germany invading and then you get things like why is austria hungary declaring war in serbia why is russia mobilizing why is France picking a side early on, like all these different things. There's so many things like that, which again makes it, I think, again, why it's so interesting to, to do. But the uh, fact of the matter is Germany was basically vilified, seen as a villain at the end of the war. And basically we're going to put blame on them, which is too bad because there's a lot of blame to be shared in World War One, of course. But the big effect that people talk about is the treaty that was made, called the Treaty of Versailles, was forced upon Germany. And when you are somebody that's seen as the aggressor of the war, somebody that is seen as you're the reason why, and you lose that war, your fate is now in the hands of the people that feel um, oppressed by you or invaded. You know, you, you invaded them, right? They, they naturally don't like you very much. So you put your fate in the people that you pissed off. And the treaty very much reflects that. It was very much sought out, especially by the French and the British, that that it was going to be something to not just like end the war, but punish Germany long term. As you saw with the um, billions of dollars that were put in as reparations, the near total dismantling of the German army ruined their economy. And for a lot of people, it ruined their pride, which, of course, brings in uh, end of the German Empire, the Weimar Republic comes in, which is a very weak, ineffective government that was unable to solve Germany's problems right after the war, as probably any government would have had those problems, but did invigorate a, a fire in people to try to reclaim kind of Germany's past greatness. You know, enter someone like Adolf Hitler, right, who was a war veteran, who um, we'll get into a lot of his experience in the war, but it was very traumatic, you know, for him, but was the reason that he got into politics was literally to dismantle the Treaty of Versailles and why he got support because it was just generally believed, you know, as the years and years went on that these uh, treat this treaty was holding back Germany from ever being great again um, or, you know, back to what they thought it should be. So, uh, yeah, there you go. But the treaty. So the question is always comes if the treaty was more lenient on Germany, would there have been a World War Two? Great question. If you got an opinion on it, throw it in the comments or throw it in discord. Very populist party with some ultra far right, you know, tender seats, uh, Ket Ingen, and, uh, you know, they slowly made some more moves that hinted that maybe a war was coming. And just 20 years later, pretty much the exact same war happened with only a couple of minor changes. Basically, an exact rerun of what happened before mm. happened again. It was deja vu. It seemed like it was the exact same thing. Even the same players on both sides, even. Both uh, yeah, I, well, kind of. I mean, Italy switches sides. Japan becomes a much bigger part of it, of course. 
but it was fought quite differently. It was quite, quite differently. Um, the technology that had developed between the two wars was like night and day. Better guns. B- biggest thing was better, bigger movement. Things that were introduced in World War I were completely made over in World War II. I'm talking uh, tanks, which were pretty crappy and not really that important in World War I. But now all of a sudden they're fast, hard-hitting uh, machines that way. Planes, right, which were basically just limited to observation work for the most part. That was their biggest impact in World War I. Are now becoming long-distance bombers and much better fighters. The technology totally changed. That's why the movement is so different. So it was, it was quite a different war. You got away from more of the trench warfare and back to more movement, kind of like older wars, but with far more capabilities to be more deadly. Looking exactly the same white and uh, you know, vaguely that way, except this time, instead of it being a conflict about like, you know, power and the, you know, the distribution of it and who thought it really should belong to, instead this time it kind of just came down to uh, you know, there being a very evil uh, you know, government doing some evil things to sure. a whole category of people. Clear, a- clear definitions, right? It's like the good guys and the bad guys, although the other war had that, but it's like for a more casual person as you see these things unfold. And of course, you know, a lot of the things that people talk about with like the atrocities of the war didn't get known, you know, for both sides and in multiple countries, didn't get known till much after. It was really after the war when you're starting about the Holocaust or what was going on with Japan or um, some of the things the Allies were, were doing, some of those atrocities really got publicized after the war. And then so the war almost became worse off in memory like it was worse than what people actually realized um at the end there a genocide so now you know world war one why did it lead to world war two because hitler thought the other team was hacking and uh we're playing by unfair terms <laughs> yeah yeah i mean not not i don't think they were saying it's unfair terms during the war they might have said after that things were unfair but not during i mean they were both doing all kinds of things to get legs up. I mean, they were, you know, they had gas, which the Germans introduced, and then uh, you get tanks coming in, and then um, all these other things that, that were going on. But, yeah, I wouldn't say they were <laughs> hacking during the war. That's not true, because it was a stalemate forever. And, you know, certain things at the end, was as resources were going low, the American introduction to the war, which helped replenish a lot of things, uh, you saw that really start to take a, a um, or have a big impact. But it's, it's basically right. The, the peace conditions were... Uh, now, you know, they're seen now as excessively cruel and punishing and uh, led to some of the, although they led to very initially a stable government, uh, the Weimar Republic, they then led to the worst hyperinflation that has ever been seen in the Western world at that point. And uh, yeah, this is a famous, there's a few really cool pictures. Maybe, you know, uh, you've seen them before, but I like to show them in my classes about inflation. What those kids are using there, if you don't know, those are blocks of money. Um, German money became worthless due to what's called hyperinflation. Their money became worthless. It also wasn't good that the uh, government or um, whoever was in charge of the printing, at, specifically at that time, was mass printing money, basically printing money with their printing presses around the clock, which just flooded their money. It became literally useless. So it was better off used as a toy. I don't know if they'll, they'll show you necessarily, but there's a... Um, pictures of people having these big blocks of money and then throwing them into their furnaces because it was almost like cheaper to just burn your money than to go and get like coal or wood or something like that to actually like warm up your house it was yeah, more cost efficient used as a toy or as a fuel source for for heat the result of trying to pay back those debts and this is the massively simplified version of how the world had a giant conflict that resulted in the most deadly uh, you know, war until that point in Europe with uh, about 40 million people, give or take, dying in a war. And then 20 years later, they did a repeat of the exact same thing, this exact same tragedy. And what happened that time was 75 million people or about 3% of the world population. This gets really- Over 100 million people will die in those two wars uh, combined. Population. So for instance, uh, in the USSR- Unbelievable. Look at that. Of the population that died in the- so we were saying how um, the Soviet Union, look what's going on there. These the deaths um, that they have, they were just absurd when you look at like comparing like their enemy Germany, right? So it's like this looks like the Soviets lost the war when you look at this, but they won. But look at the cost as compared to like Germany. Insane. Then you got with China and they're just uh, millions being slaughtered with the Japanese invasion there. Um, that gets 
criminally underlooked, um, the, the Eastern front of the war. I'm talking about before, like, uh, Pearl Harbor and necessarily the, the, um, the, uh, the sort of counteroffensive by um, the Allies in the Pacific there. But story for another time. Which is on top of the ones that died in the first war, but they left halfway through, so you know they're kind of overcompensating for that. But then if you take that for you know like eighteen to twenty year old men, like people of fighting age, um, the percentages literally go over half. Over half the people of certain demographics died. You know, and it's a whole generation so of people died so in Europe. A whole generation is gone. The time they came home, and that is why the horrors of war is something that uh, you know is like kind of ingrained within people of that time. That is why. The desire for peace was very strongly sought at the time, something which has sadly gone away as both wars fade away from memory. But um, yeah, it is, oh Jesus, I am so dead. That is why people are more willing to <laughs> risk war in the modern age, it seems as though, because again, the horrors of it have been kind of lost on people because most, most you know, things that we called war since then have been uh, kind of lost on it. But yeah, total war is a thing that does exist, can exist, and leads to pretty terrible things when, it, when, when those things happen. So just remember, this is a Minecraft video, but you better believe war equals bad, and you probably shouldn't do it, maybe. I bet. Also, what... IBX Toy Cat, changing the world. And also, better dead than red, you know? <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching today's video thing. I hope you all enjoyed it. I feel like we went up a bit of a downer at the end there, so... Let's, let's also finish by saying, if it weren't for World War II, we wouldn't have these wacky... Uh, you know, KFC ads where Hitler is instead, you know, the colonel. That's, that's, that's fun. That's, What's that? That's only happened because of the, the 75 million deaths. So, we can't, we can't say that... What was he referring to? Did I miss something? Video. Now that's a positive note to end the Minecraft video on. Like, favorite, subscribe, and I'll see you all. Get him. Goodbye. <laughs> all right. Goodbye. Goodbye. We'll let him say goodbye one more time. <laughs> All right, everybody. So this was great. Um, I love, you know, when when you can, I don't want to call it like sneak in a lesson into what's essentially, a, you know, uh, or what's, what's, what's a video game and you can kind of sneak in some things in there. I'm fine for it if the goal is to educate people. So, you know, you hope something like this, we're just a casual Minecraft player that wants to see a video on that. Also got to learn about World War One, you know, and using that tool. So from that standpoint, I like what IBX uh, Toy Cat does with those sort of things and bringing in like education with the Minecraft there. So that's, uh, that's good stuff. But yeah, he, he was able to explain a lot of things, a lot of real good things about kind of how the war is viewed and a little bit about the conduct. Hopefully it was able to add some things and kind of um, to, to, to put some more context or um, attach some things about how you can, how you can view this war and my opinions kind of about the study of world war one and stuff like that. So hopefully you got some good things out of that. All right. The original video was down below. So make sure you support that. If you're into, um, you know, Minecraft videos and like history, geography, political stuff, he combines a lot of that. It seems, I think it's like the third video I've reacted to from, from over here. And, uh, it's, you know, gotten a lot of good reactions. So that's pretty good there. I remember, like I said, at the beginning of the video, if you would like to join a history themed, uh, Minecraft server, uh, you could join the one in our community. Now, again, where to do that, to get the IP, it's a, a PC Java version. So that's the one we have right now. And to join, uh, we want you to join our Discord server because that's where you can communicate and get kind of rules and interact with um, the moderators and other players. They, uh, a lot of people are down there I've seen that are communicating with each other and like joining up on projects and stuff like that. So to get the IP for it and to get more information, you're going to join our Discord server. The link will be down below if you have not. And then in the channels, you'll see a Minecraft channel with a bunch of information there. That's where you can go and learn about it and hopefully yeah, have some fun. I'm going to be peeking in on the server from time to time. I want to see what you guys have. So if you haven't joined up, definitely come in. I want to see your skills, make anything history related. It's awesome. People are making like old historical buildings and sites and stuff like that from what I've heard but i want to go and clean so uh, hopefully if you make something cool there we can get you featured on the channel all right and with that uh, we'll go ahead and wrap up links to other things are down in the um in the description as well but with that we'll go ahead and see you next time bye